Math class, how to get good at math for real estate investors and business owners. Today, this is a class four, how to calculate 25% of any number in seconds. You don't get paid by the hour, you get paid by the value in the hour. That's a good one, good one, good job. What is a quarter of something? It's half of half, right? So what we really need to get is get good at just halving a number and getting half of a number very quickly and then doing that again and we get 25%. This is what we were talking earlier, very good. This is depreciation, 25%. We're gonna use this actually a lot to get half of a number. So here's how we do this. Again, we chunk things up. The most important part about any of these tests that you guys are taking or any of those, remember uh, Holbrook was talking about this earlier, getting, doing really well on tests is that you take complicated things and you make them into very simple things. So the best way to do that is to break up these numbers. So look at these numbers, 48, for example. Just look at the four. What's half of four? Two. What's half of eight? Four, right? Very easy, 24. And then say these numbers, the way we say it out loud is 20 plus four. So look at 64 as 30 plus two, 32. Look at 26 as right 10 plus three, right? Very good, right? And then 10 plus three. So we could say these numbers out loud, but it's the way that we want to look at them, 20 plus four, right? right? So 32 divided by two is 16. But that sounds a little weird because you look at the three, what's half of three? See what I'm saying? So it gets a little bit different when we have odd numbers. So that's why we want to look at like 78, 54, 36. That's a little bit weirder, a little bit stranger to get half of, right? The odds get a little tricky. So the way we do this, we want to add to the easy street, right? So the way we do this is look at 10. Anytime you have 10, half of that is going to be five. And you have 30, half of that's going to be 15. When you have 50, half of that is going to be 25 something. Anytime you have 70, half of that's going to be 35. 90, it's going to be 45. So for example, the number 78, it's going to be 35 plus something, right? 35 plus, in this case, 4. 35 plus 4, because we're going to look at that number. So when you look at this number on the left, it's going to be 35 plus. The number on the right is 4, right? So what if they are both odd? In this, well, I guess we're supposed to go over examples if they're, okay, so let's do 58, let's do 34, and let's do 96. Should I put them on different lines? Is that easier? All right, I didn't, I uh, gotta move Mr. Gorgeous. All right, so this is gonna be 54, it's gonna be 25 plus four, right? 25 plus four, because we're gonna look, it's supposed to be plus, all right, just all right, 29, all right? So 34 is gonna be 15 plus two, 17, right? And 96 is gonna be 45 plus three, right? Plus three is 48, right? So we can quickly tell how we go back up here, this is our, our gauge here, our 45 plus line. That's how we get to half of these. But what if they're both odd? That gets a little bit trickier, right? What if it's 77, 53, 95? Again, we're going to do the same thing. 77 is 35 plus, what is 7? It's going to be 3.5. So it's 35 plus 3 plus 0.5 or 38, right? Now, what about 38.5 divided by 2? That gets a little weird. We're going to talk about that a little bit separately. But again, it's going to kind of be the same thing. 38, so we know that it's 15 plus 4 because 30 is 15. 8 plus 4, and then the 0.5 is going to be 0.25. 15 plus 4 plus 0.25 is 19.25. But it gets a little bit trickier. What if it's 39 and a half? Now it's going to be 15 plus 4 and a half, right? Plus, what is that? 0.25, right? 15 plus 4 plus 0.5 plus 0.25. Or 19 plus 0.5 plus 0.25. Or 19.5 plus 0.25 plus equals 19.75. Don't worry about this last one. I know. Don't worry about this last We have another trick that we use for this. That's just to give you an example of all we're going to do is take this number number 35 or 77 or whatever and add it to 35 plus 3 plus 5 right break it down so it's very simple now there's a lot of uses like i said about getting 25 percent. how do we half a number and then half a number again to get 25 percent very quickly and how do we look at when wherever we have odd numbers how do we quickly determine what half of that number is going to be how do we say for example 77 is really 35 plus 3 plus 0.5 right so we start in an entry decimals we're going to talk about that more when we get to the percentage class so just now just know what we're doing is taking the complicated thing and making it very simple like 30 plus 3 plus 0.5 right 33 Three and a half. So the uses of this are very much, you, you were ahead of me when you were, put, when you were putting this in there, because those of you that are hiring, which everyone should be doing, this is very important to get done to understand how much you can hire people for. When we want to convert hourly to yearly income, it's amazing how many people don't know this. For the rest of your lives, you guys will always be ahead of the people you talk to that don't know this, and very few people do. So multiply the hourly by two and then by a thousand. So if somebody's making five dollars an hour, that's going to be what five times a thousand be? Five thousand, and then multiply that by two. Or the opposite, just take five times two, that's and then add a so five times two is ten thousand dollars a year. If somebody's making ten dollars an hour times two is twenty thousand dollars a year. If somebody's making fifteen dollars an hour times two is thirty thousand dollars a year. If somebody's making twenty dollars an hour times two is forty thousand dollars a year, right? So you can just take this number, multiply it by two, and then say a thousand, and that's how much they're making. If somebody's making twenty-five dollars an hour, twenty-five times two is fifty thousand dollars a year, right? So all the way down here, fifty dollars an hour is a hundred thousand dollars a year. Hundred dollars an hour times two is two hundred thousand dollars a year, right? So now we turn our year 
yearly numbers into monthly targets. So if we're ever trying to hire, whenever we want to divide something by 12 to take, you know, find out what the payments are going to be, really something divided by 12 is really something divided by four and then by three. So if we divide it by four, we're already halfway there. So it's an easy way to understand how to quickly start uh, calculating monthly payments. But we'll talk more about that in the, right, in the divided by three section. But why don't we take $15 an hour? So $15 an hour is how much per year? 15 times two is $30,000 a year. So if you're paying someone $15 an hour, they're making $30,000 a year or $2,500 a month. See, so we're divided by four and then by three. Right. So $30,000 a year, but divided by three is 10,000 divided by four is 2,500. So you're paying them $2,500 a month. A hire that should, now a hire like that, if we're hiring someone like that, they should produce at least three times, three times what you're paying. So if we're hiring somebody for $15 an hour, they should be making us at least, or that means we're paying them 30 grand a year. They should be making you at least $90,000 a year. So how do we figure out what we need to do to make that happen? If you make $10,000 per deal, that's nine deals in one year that you need to make. Now we're, right, so what's nine divided by two? Four and a half deals, right? About four and a half deals every six months. Now we take that, divide that by two, 2.25 deals every three months, right? So all we're doing is cutting it in half by half or one and 1.25, which is basically about a deal a month. That's what you need, about one deal a month. So this is how we quickly figure out how much somebody's costing us, how much money we need to make per deal and how much we need to do as far as our policies starting today to be able to make three times our money. So we need one deal a month from that person. So the real question is, do you have the policies for that? If you don't have the policies for someone to come on your team working you know, full time at $15 an hour, they should be able to put together at least one deal a month. If you have those policies, then you could quickly say, you know what, I'm going to make three times my money. The biggest reason people don't scale or hire people effectively is because they don't know how to hire them. They don't have the policies. They don't have the checklist, the scripts, the drawings. They don't know exactly what to have them do. Once you do, it becomes really easy because of course you want to hire someone for $15 an hour because every dollar you pay them, they're making you three times that money back, right? Another use of this is for any yearly cost target. Let's say we want to do, want to figure out if we know that how much something is per year, just divide that by two. That's how much it's going to cost or you want to make every six months and divide that again by two and you get how much you want to make quarterly. So if something costs you $8,000 a year, that's $4,000 every six months or $2,000 every quarter, right? So do one at a time. When are you going to use this? Use this a lot. We'll come back to this. Discount sales, prices stuff, calculated commissions, depreciation, all kinds of stuff, right? For more of these math classes, go to bigria.com. Thank you. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up